exhibition of pictures and ticket stubs from the Click Club at Burberry's in Broad Street has now gone on show. Yes, the exhibition is called Is There Anyone Out There? And it documents the whole four years in the life of the Click Club, a regular Tuesday night event. The organisers hope the exhibition will be a fuel behind a permanent music museum in Birmingham. Well, joining me now in the studio is Paul Long, Professor of Media, Culture and History at Birmingham City University. Welcome. Now, for those that missed out on our previous interview last mm -hmm. week, what's the exhibition all about? Okay, well, it documents the life of a club that uh, was located. The club was, the night was called mm. the Click Club, and it was a venue for alternative bands um, on the indie circuit in the late 80s. Mm. And it was also the site of an alternative disco. Yeah. And it was located in one of the premier clubs in Birmingham. Burgers mm. on the street, on Broad Street, which mm. was a uh, bespoke, quite glamorous club. I'm told that it used to account for 1% of all champagne <laughs> sales in the UK, but um, it, it offered a particular space for people who didn't fit into the, uh, the okay. usual kind of towny culture in Birmingham at that time. And why, I mean, over the four years that the Click Club was open and the, the night that it had on every Tuesday night, mm -hmm. basically, why was it important to showcase? Why turn this into an exhibition? Okay. Well, it's serendipity, really. Um, I'm a researcher who belongs to a research centre at Birmingham City University. Mm. And one of the things we've been paying attention to, particularly with my colleague Jess Collins, yeah. who also founded the Birmingham Music Archive, is there's been a, a boom in recent years in, alongside the heritage industry. A, a lot of attention has been paid to popular music heritage. Mm. So you can go to places like Memphis, Seattle, um, Liverpool, Manchester too, and go on heritage trails to yeah. see where the Beatles lived and what have you. And um, a lot of this has started to take place generated by communities and people themselves, and there's a lot of it online. I mean, mm. really, it's prodigious. And um, we came across this site dedicated to the Click Club, which was founded by, um, which was started on Facebook by one of the founders, mm. Dave Travis, who, who, before he started the club, was a, a music uh, magazine photographer. And yeah. he'd systematically taken photos of both the bands and the audiences. Um, during the period of the Click Club. And he, he's gone on to do this. He's still a music promoter. He's a very successful entrepreneur. Yeah. And we thought this was too good an opportunity to miss and sort of kept badgering him and asking him if he'd... And now he's it put in. it all together. That's right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, he, he, he looks to the future. He's not particularly interested in the past because yeah. he's, a, he's, as I say, he's an entrepreneur interested in the now. And um, the, the image was, was, was so beautiful and so interesting. And it's so unusual to find... Yeah. A document of a place that's not in New York or London or really famous. It's the Click Club in Birmingham. Yeah. And now, obviously, you've got a Facebook website whereby people that used to go to the Click Club and this event, they can all join and they, right. they socialise in the network and they reminisce the good times that that's they right. had there. And now, obviously, you've got the exhibition going on at Birmingham City University. Mm -hmm. Have you had people who used to attend the, the club itself actually say, oh, yes, I went there and share their fond memories? There's a lot of that. Um, we launched the exhibition on a Tuesday night a week mm. ago and we also had a, a band who are still active, Mighty Mighty, but who were kind of core to that scene mm. in the 80s. They were all about 10 I think when they started. Uh, they, they launched the event and we had about 200 people who uh, were either invitees from within the university or across Dave Travis's yeah. network and some of those were from the several hundred who were on the Facebook group too. So, you know, a lot of those people have changed. Some of the artists came, you know, people yeah. in some of the bands at that time who were, who were seen on the images and the people there who were in the photographs who were, you know, the punters looking at themselves 30 years ago. <laughs> so there's an interesting confrontation with the past, you know, physically. Did they know yeah. that photos of them would actually be going up on the exhibition? What's their reaction? Well, <laughs> um, yeah, I think some people would discover... I mean, we didn't know all the people in the photographs. Yeah. I mean, for instance, we have... The final night at that venue, I mean, it did move on to a bigger venue, but it wasn't quite the same, in, yeah. in my opinion, because of the nature of how it worked at uh, Burberry's. But we've got five big blow-ups of contact sheets, so we've got sort of several hundred photographs of the very last night, and there were something like a 1,000 people trying to get in there, and there's a lot of them in these photographs. And, of course, <laughs> this is one of the things that people are looking at, thinking, I either know there's me or I know someone, yeah. you know, and uh, there's someone famous. I didn't know they used to go. 
And, and of course, some of them are Brummies, others are students who've now moved on and um, moved around the world. And a lot of Brummies have shown an interest uh, again, who might yeah. have moved away and have, have shown interest Because I know abroad. you've got a reunion on Saturday, and it's not just people locally that are attending, right. it's people from all across the UK. Yeah, I mean, people have expressed an interest in, in coming down and, and regrouping, as it yeah. were. So there are two groups I know are coming over the day on Saturday. Um, we've got a bunch of people who were in a local band, Elizabeth Jane, who mm. played at the uh, club a number of times. Um, and they're regrouping. Some of them have gone off to be doctors or head teachers or whatever. So they're coming in the afternoon. Mm. And then a number of people who'd been at Birmingham University, funnily enough, they used to work for the university television and film interviews <laughs> yeah. with bands at the club. And they've been interested. And they, they, these are people who also got in touch and gave us memories that we've used in the on the wall of yeah. the exhibition, but also in the brochure to sort of create the story mm. and provoke people to think about the past in that way. Now, it's held in a university That's itself. Right. So not only is it for, you know, members who used to go to the clip club to come and attend and share their memories, it's also for youngsters to learn about. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, part of the challenge for us is, is we want people to engage with some of the research that we do mm. and also get people thinking about the nature of why the past matters and whether you know popular music and you know being part of a mm. subculture matters um, and and I think part of the contention we present is it does matter because people carry the music with them mm. they make solid friends or they're inspired by the scenes that they're part of to go on and be creative or perhaps to live life in a particular way and um, it would be great just to have a nostalgic exercise yeah. but we want to reach the young mm. so we have students in the university but we want to reach much more widely yes. than those people and it's in a public space by the way the Parkside Gallery is open to the public it's not behind yeah. boundaries it's open all week and just to I mean finish on is do you want this to basically fuel a music museum within the region is well, this the main aim okay well that's one of the questions that's been uh, raised by a number of parties so mm. we, we work in conjunction with the Birmingham Music Archive founded by my colleague uh, Jess Collins but also you probably know about the home of metal project that had a big impact in 2011 and which is still going led mm. by the capsule music organization and they, they've been badgering for a permanent representation of the city's music culture, not just the city, but the region. Yeah. Um, perhaps in the museum or the museums, or whether there could be a bespoke museum. And I think exercises like this are a way of exploring, well, what's the demand for this kind of stuff? Does it go beyond simply, yeah, let's course. have a look? And will people do their own thing? Oh, well, thank you so much, Paul, for joining me in the studio.